So hey guys, welcome to other Warframe video, where today we're gonna take a quick look at the Incarnon Sinoid Gamma Core. You can get the Incarnon Genesis adapter for the Gamma Core from the Steel Pot version of the circuit game mode. Once you have the adapter and a Gamma Core, you can take them over to Cavalero in the Chrysalith to combine them. But to do this, you will also need 20 Pathos Clamps, which you get from the Autoworm boss fight, 70 Uyamag, which is the cactus looking plant that grows in Kulervo's hold and the desert section of the Paradox, and 80 Lamentus, which drops from enemies in the Paradox. This allows you to evolve the weapon and it unlocks it's in Karnon mode. You can build the Incarnon meter by headshooting enemies, and once you have any level of charge, you can press the secondary fire button to activate it. In this mode, the Gamma Core will fire a projectile that turns into a vortex that draws enemies towards the center once it hits something, and then after 1.2 seconds detonates, dealing pure cold damage in a 5 meter area. The base cold damage of the explosion is 760, which is decent enough, and there's a 30% fall off on the explosion, which isn't that big of a deal because most enemies will be drawn to the center, so they most of the time take full damage. Now, before you can take full advantage of the evolutions and the benefits that those provide, you're gonna have to do a few things with the Gamma Core. So you're gonna have to do a solo mission with the Gamma Core, you're gonna have to kill 100 enemies with its incarnate mode, and finally you're gonna have to kill 40 enemies while airborne. The evolution options on the Gamma Core are fairly tame, with the first one being a choice between Sage's Resolve for 10 base damage and then 25% multi-shot if you have a channeled ability active and infused shots, which gives you 6 base damage but then gives you additional 5 damage for 10 seconds whenever you spend 50 the energy and this stacks up to four times. The second choice is between Evolved Autoloader, which reloads half your magazine every second while the weapon is holstered, Moonrise Velocity, which adds 8 meters of extra range to the Gamma Core, and Extended Volley, which increases your magazine capacity by 40. And last but definitely not least, we have a choice between Critical Parallel for extra crit chance and damage, Survivor's Edge for a little bit of extra crit and status chance, and finally Elemental Balance for 6% extra status. I ended up going with the combination of Sage's Resolve because it's more base damage without having to do anything, though this very much depends on the Warframe you run the weapon with. Then we have Moonrise Velocity because extra range on beam weapons always feels nice, and I topped it off with Critical Parallel for the extra crit. Now for the build, I tried out a few different things, but this is the one that I ended up liking the most. So we have Gavanized Shot for the status chance and extra damage, Gavanized Diffusion for multi-shot, Lethal Terrain for fire rate and multi-shot, then Prime Target Cracker and Creeping Bullseye for crit, followed by Frostbite for cold and status, and then Pistol Pestilence with Jolt for corrosive and status, as well as Secondary Merciless for stacking damage and reload speed. This works really well for the regular fire mode on the Gamma Core, which actually rips enemies up quite quickly, even in Steel Path, as you can see right here, and it's decent enough for the Incarnate mode as well. And that's what I was trying to do, I didn't want to lean too much into one or the other. Though to be entirely honest with you, if I wasn't showcasing the weapon, I would definitely build it more towards its regular fire mode, because it has infinitely more damage than the Incarnate mode. You basically have a choice here, you can either build this for damage and focus on the regular mode, or you can build it for AoE and focus on the Incarnate mode. Though to be fair, I don't think it's that good of an idea to build this weapon towards AoE, not because it's necessarily bad at AoEing things, because once you slap on Prime Fulmination, the AoE is quite good, plus you have the Syndicate effect if you're running the Sinoid version of the Gamma Core, but because of how bad this weapon is at generating Incarnate charge, it takes forever to get a full charge, and once you do, you only have 15 shots in the Incarnate mode. This, combined with the relatively low damage of the Incarnate explosions, absolutely kills it. This in my opinion would have been much better as a secondary fire, so you press secondary fire, you fire out the vortex, sucks enemies in, big boom. Now, there is one redeeming feature here, and that's the fact that the evolutions buff the Gamma Core quite a bit. Like, the numbers might not seem that impressive, you know, you get 10 base damage, whoop to do but the Gamma Core does 20 base damage, so you're getting 50% more base damage to scale with just the first evolution. So it actually ends up being quite strong. So definitely pick it up if you're a fan of the Gamma Core and you just want a better version of it with boosted stats. Outside of that though, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it over most of the other Incarnon weapons. However, one thing to bear in mind here, always, is that I compare these Incarnon guns to other Incarnon guns, and when you do that, the Gamma Core just ends up being okay, but when you compare Compare it to all the guns in the game, it's actually pretty damn good. This goes for the Gorgon as well, which we did yesterday, though I do believe the Gamma Core is better than the Gorgon as far as Incarnate weapons go, because at least its Incarnate mode sucks the enemies in and doesn't just let them walk out, like the Gorgon. 
So all in all, compared to the other Incarnum weapons, the Gamma Core is just okay, but compared to all the guns in the game, it's actually pretty damn good. And that is pretty much it for the video, so I thank you very much for watching. As always guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it helpful. I would like to extend a special thank you to all the channel members, thank you very much guys, I really appreciate it. And if you would like to become a channel member as well, by the way, you can check out the memberships and stuff down below. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye.